clear prop. Welcome back. So the purpose of today's mission was to see if I could establish that the aircraft was stable in the roll axis and I was going to use that or do that by using the aileron trim. Hundred. Thunderstorm. Information not available. Valdosta Regional Airport. Automated weather observation. One three zero niner Zulu. Wind three six zero at zero five. Visibility one zero. Sky condition clear. Temperature two four Celsius. Dew point two one Celsius. Altimeter three zero zero three. Remarks. Density altitude one thousand three hundred. Thunderstorm information not available. So the conditions were pretty much perfect this morning, um, five knots pretty much directly down the runway and uh, nothing else much going on so and nobody else at the airfield whatsoever so it was had the whole place to myself. Uh, 
Uh, no, they're actually, actually the third time, but that was the most um, altitude that I've got. And uh, felt better than the last couple of times, actually. How did it look from there? <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Two tanker Delta. I would say that that was uh, much better than my last two attempts. Um, gonna go look at some video, see how that looks and let things cool down a little bit and uh, maybe I'll give it another try, but at this point, I mean, it's flying and I'm just more concerned about getting too much air and not having enough time to land there. I was a bit panicked um, on that one. Not, not panicked, just concerned that, you know, when you get up that high, the runway looks a lot shorter, especially when it's as wide as what it is. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think I rushed it down onto the ground a little bit, but again, because I was just, you know, looking at the end of the runway thinking, oh, I need to get down here soon. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've, I dialed in some um, aileron trim ahead of time. I looked at my fuel imbalance. I had five gallon imbalance on the right side, so I knew it was going to be heavy on the right side. So I dialed in some uh, left wing down aileron trim. And, uh, you know, just enough that I thought would make the difference to help uh, stabilize it in roll. And, and honestly, I think um, there was a little bit of a correction I needed to make there in terms of the roll, but uh, I think for the most part uh, it was pretty good in roll and definitely uh, stable in pitch. I uh, didn't seem to have any problems with that. So, uh, anyway, we'll take a look at the video and see how it looks. And if you keep an eye on the ground speed versus the indicated airspeed, once it gets airborne, you'll see that they actually start to line up, uh, meaning that the static port is reading more correctly uh, once the airplane is airborne. Also note the aileron there, how much it's being held deflected by the trim tab. So this time I didn't actually take the power off until after I was airborne and that sort of uh, made the difference to cushion it um, as I pushed the nose forward. And this is at 20% normal speed. So it came off cleanly and then I just gently pushed forward on the nose just to stop the rotation and then basically just took any sort of elevator pressure away there and just let it do its thing at which point you know I took the power off or at least back to about 20 percent um, because I was you know climbing and as you can see there really wasn't anything going on in the roll axis I made a slight adjustment to come back on the center line to the left and then after that um, pretty much didn't have to do anything and it stayed nice and level
And next up is a look from the right wing for the full run. And I've taken this camera out of its case in order to stop it from fogging up, but that um, ends up creating a lot of wind noise because of that. And now the view from the Garmin camera and the, just pay attention there on the graph there on the bottom left corner that uh, you know right when I pull the power back at the peak there that it's still accelerating uh, quite decently there from you know up all the way up to 93 knots and if I'd left the power in you can kind of see where the curve would be I don't think it would take too much time to be over 100 knots and, and then you know ultimately up to 110 or 20 knots I think is going to be what the climb out will be. So I think I've achieved what I wanted to do with the ground effect testing and that was to establish that the aircraft was uh, stable in all three axes and I think I've managed to do that and I can handle it, I can get it off the ground, I can set it back down again without too many problems. So my next step now is to get some time in some other aircraft around the area here and just get familiar with the area and then start making um, the plan for getting the aircraft around the pattern the first time. So that's my update, thanks again for watching and tune in again for the next one.